All right, boys and girls, let's get down to the bait we have today. Today, I went bare minimal. I mean, I am bare minimal. What we have here for our first rod is a newer style Zepco 33. It's supposed to be a remake of the older ones, but yeah, they're, they're, they're okay. Uh, we'll be using a Cricut on this little, uh, this little crappie jig here and under a float, as you can see. Uh, this here, I think, has like six pound line. That's what comes on it, I believe. Uh, I actually bought this about two years ago, and they do okay. I've had one mess up on me, but, you know, um, here is the other one. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite panfish rods broke. So I just went to Walmart, got one of these cheap Shakespeare Durangos. Uh, it currently has a uh, Pluceno, uh, I think 3000, yeah, PL3000 off of Amazon. Uh, these are really good little reels. They're smooth. They're cheap. Uh, I have four pound XL trialing on this and this is the one I'm going to be using the metal on um, It's just a simple Number uh, I think a size one hook little golden uh, Eagle claw Little little sinker and of course a little floater with the weight I don't know if this floater will hold the weight of the metal, but we'll give it a go um, But yeah Show you what tackle I have here. I literally just have this little you know, this is literally all I brought with me. I mean, bare minimal. You know, a few hooks, few sinkers, a few little hair jigs here, a few little floaters. I got some floaters in my pocket, a pair of pliers. And I got my old trusty pliers with me just in case I need to cut my line or or pull a hook out. Uh, for bait, this is what we have. We have some uh, good old crickets. I got a tube of crickets here. These are a little bit smaller guys, but that's okay. Um, this is my first time ever using this tube here. I usually use to the round basket. So I'm not sure, you know, it's supposed to be easier to pull the cap and shake the minnow out in your, I mean the minnow, Lord have mercy, help me. Uh, the cricket here out into your hand so you have to dig around in the bucket. And then for minnows, we went with some uh, medium sized minnows. That's what we have in there. So uh, yeah, let's get these posts baited up and let's see what we catch today. Uh oh, my bobber's gone. I gotta get this cricket on here for losing. Alright, the bobber's gone. Alright. I'm sure the bobber's still gone. Got him. Wonder what it is. First fish of the day. Itty bitty bass. Wow. I want my minnow. Little itty bitty guy. <laughs> Hooked right in the bottom side of the mouth. He almost followed it. He almost followed it. Set this pole down here. Man, look at that monster there. Man, that is a monster. <laughs> He's about a hand length, guys. He's maybe seven inches, six inches. Not even that. Probably about five. I'd say five. Cool five. Pretty fish, though. All right, well, there's our first fish of the day. Definitely no monster, but I'll take it. All right, let's get another.
Alrighty, in a new spot here. Up here. Might have to go a little deeper in this area. And it's pretty deep right, right through here. So, be interesting to see what happens up through here. It's definitely deeper. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but as soon as you get to the paint there, about four or five feet all out, you can see it starts dropping. Not even four foot from the bank starts dropping. I figured give this a little go right through here. I seen some bass swimming around when I was walking up. Kinda kinda like spot fishing almost like, but not not entirely. I mean who wouldn't want to throw a pole out if you saw a couple fish swimming around? I mean, you know, come on. I gotta be careful too because on these rocks here. Uh I can hear when you're walking. If you're walking up to them, they're up there chilling around the bank. You're going to spook them. That's for sure. Once we get to the end down there, I'll throw my cricket back out. This wind and the waves are kind of making it rough to fish with two poles. I'd love to get up next to that thing over and fish around it. You know there's about to be some fish schooled up around it. Would have to be. What I might do if we start to where we're not catching much is uh might get on Google Maps and figure out where they drop the uh, uh, fish attractions. So fish attractions up in this water that they drop. Some of them are bank bank accessible. You know you can get close to them as long as you fish within that general area. Some good bait though. They'll they'll come to you. Oh, there's one. There's one. Nice fish. Oh, that's a nice little bass. Did y'all see him jump out of that water? I mean, he's no monster by any means, but still a nice little bass. Give him this old cheap rod a bend. <laughs> oh, cool. Sweet. Come on in here, little guy. Come on in here. Get him up here so he don't flop and hurt himself on the rocks. Sweet. Easy. Oh, there. Oh, oh, nope. He ain't done yet. Oh, there. Nice little bass. Nice 10, 11. And now this is a 10 to 11 inch bass. That little guy I had earlier, he wasn't about that long. Nice little bass. Healthy looking. All right. Can't beat that. You can beat that at all so yeah get a picture of him here oh my god my phone's acting up All right, back in the water he goes. Nice little bath. I need to start carrying a tape measure around with me. All right, getting back in the water here. There he goes. He or she, one of the two. All right, let's see if we can't catch another one. All right, we're done here on this end. Let's go over here so we can't squeeze in over at Spillway, where I know the fish are probably at. We got some minnows, so we'll go over and give it a try. Go for a city. Definitely what it smells like.
I believe I'm going to take this floater off because I never have no luck here on a floater. It's always bottom. Only bad thing about using crickets. All right, let's try some cricket. Maybe there's some bluegill down in there. Yep, something's hitting the cricket already. Got him. Oh man, what we got? Right now, fish. Tighten the drag up. Went really big in that rock coming up this wall. I catch anything big. Good lord, look what a bluegill. That's eating size there. Lord have mercy. Look there, what a bluegill. Wow. That's a nice bluegill. Almost dropped him. He's nice and thick too. Look at that. Oh, it's a nice bluegill. All right, let's get him back in the water. All right. Let's try it again. We can catch another good size bluegill. Last time I was here too, man, I caught a bunch of big bluegills just like that. Play like nine to ten inch bluegill right there. Every bit of it. I'd say a good solid nine. I need to start bringing my, my scale and my measuring tape with me. And then drop it down a little bit further on the water. There we go. Oh, there's a fish. Come on, take it. Oh, missed him. Might have cleaned. And then crickets are usually one bite and they're done. Hey, if I put the rod on the, he's on there the whole time. Oh, that's another nice blue kill, man. Oh, well, not as big. He looked bigger than that coming up. Look at that nice blue kill. Eh, he may go seven sits, maybe if that. See you there, little guy. Oh, there's one. Got him. Sweet. Nice bluegill, too. Look at there. Ow. Nice little bluegill. Nice and thick. Man, they make a nice mess. I need to come up here and bring my basket. Look at that. Some good colors on him. Back it goes. They're in here, but I ain't caught any. Not with this, I ain't. What are you, what are you you're catching the heat? Nah, I just catch and throw them back today. I didn't bring my fish basket to keep them. Or I would have. But they some pretty good size bluegill. Yeah. Yeah, the YouTube channel? Yeah. What is it? Uh, the Solo Fisherman.
Thank you, I appreciate it. Nice meeting you. That cricket's half dead, but we're going to use him anyways. That's a nice bluegill in here. I like coming up here on weekdays. Weekdays it's pretty dead and you can fish just about anywhere up to here. I really like to be up that way more, but the water's coming out, but I'm not going to go up there and cast on top of somebody. Leave us here first, so first come. Bluegill, they're thick in there today, ain't they? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this afternoon, man, should come up in there with catfish. Yeah. Probably be a good idea. There's yeah. definitely, definitely enough bait in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never seen them this day. I mean, it's just every cast. <laughs> yeah, they're, I had two more. They're in the middle. Really? Hard level. Yeah, last time I was up here, I caught a nice rainbow trout up here. Oh, rainbow trout. Nice one, probably, probably, probably about two pounds, nothing my, big. My son come down here, and he, he, that's all he does, he pull out the crap. Huh. Right all right, boys and girls, I'm back in the old Dodge now. Um, had a fun time. We caught two bass up there in the main lake. Uh, missed one or two. Um, and then noticed they wouldn't bite no more for us, so I decided to come down here, check out the spillway, and we had an opening, so we was able to get into a spot. Uh, caught, oh man, it, it's just ridiculous. Um, I, I can't put all them bluegill on one video, it would take up too long. Uh, the guy, gentleman beside me, he was burning up bluegill on red worms as fast as you hit the water, and he said he went from minnows to red worms because the bluegill wouldn't quit eating his minnows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. Uh, we got some trout fishing coming up here soon, and I hope you stick around for some of that. And we're going to get down to start doing some catch and cook videos. Uh, things are starting to slow down around my part of the world, and I'm able to get out and get, get some fishing done now. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to go out with y'all and bring y'all along with me. But, uh, I'm going to end this video here today, and I'm going to head home, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye, y'all.